Hello, my friends. Welcome to Dennis Talk Show. This is Dennis Crepaldi speaking. How are you? Today, I'm going to be talking to Beatriz Albertoni Salomone. Wow. <laughs> AKA Bia. Hi, Bia. How are you? I am fine. And you? I'm great. I was so anxious for this interview. Welcome to Dennis Talk Show. Well, I'm really happy to be here. I can't believe this is uh, finally happening, right? Yes. Uh, I'm really glad to be on national television. Yes. <laughs> especially, especially with you as a host, my best friend. Oh. Uh, so this is going to be great. Yeah, just gave a spoiler already. B and I, we, we've met many years ago, more than 10 years ago, and we are best friends, BFFs, forever, really. And <laughs> I was as anxious as her. People, my dear friends, Bia, she did some things already in her life. She has a degree in journalism. She has already worked as an English teacher for a, a short period of time. Bia has already worked as well with social media. As Gabi Pedroso, remember our first interview? <laughs> Bia was also a spy. Bia has been working with gastronomy. She has been working at Brasilis da Mesa. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest platforms in Brazil. We're going to talk a lot about it, about that today. So, Bia, the first question I always ask to my guests, my dear guests, is how is English around you nowadays? Um, as you said, I used to teach English, so, um, but it was a long time ago and I had no idea how my English is. Uh, it's been a long time since I rock and rolled. Uh, I mean, uh, since, <laughs> since I last spoke English <laughs> to someone, I am always in touch with uh, English somehow. I listen to music a lot, uh, watch series and movies, but I don't practice as much as much as I should. Guys, I think everybody has this problem, yeah. Well, well no problem, but this condition, let's say. But to start, yes, I know you are very anxious for this topic, as I am. Gastronomy and journalism. First of all, I'm hungry because I didn't have lunch today. Me neither. <laughs> Who? so it's gonna be hard. Especially our game in the end, my friends. Wait for it. Oh God. I couldn't start without asking you about your degree in journalism. From your own experience and perspective, how do you see the area as a whole? It's a really competitive. There are more journalists than job available. Mainly because it's been a, a long time actually. Journalism is struggling to adjust to this digital area. Yeah. Uh, so traditional media income, uh, it's basically advertising. Yeah? And with new ways of producing content on the internet and especially social media, companies and advertisers are now investing money not only in TVs, newspaper, magazines, radio, yes. And the consequences of that are layoffs in an attempt to, to reduce costs. The journalists that actually stay in their jobs has, have, to, have to double work. From my perspective, uh, nowadays, a journalist is not the person that uh, knows how to write an article or do an interview. That's not enough anymore. You have to be a journalist, but also a photographer, a video maker, a marketing spe specialist. What? Yes, you have oh, to. God. Yes, yes. You have to really be multitasking. Yes. Yes, exactly that. Yes, and and also because with um, the internet, everything changes so fast, right? So we have to be up to date with how people receive information. So one day is just uh, a website, a blog. And the next day, we have to pass information through stories on Instagram, podcasts, TikTok. So everything changes really, really fast. In that matter, journalism has new possibilities. We are living, obviously, this fake news generation, right? All around the world, not only in Brazil, but especially in Brazil, since from, from 2018 on. How can people trust what they read or watch nowadays? First, I think it's important to explain what fake news actually are. Yes, they are wrong information intentionally reproduced to build, to build a narrative and to achieve an objective. Yes, 
So we usually see that during political campaigns, yes, for example. Uh, and fake. Uh, and what is interesting about that is that fake news broadcasters, yes, use uh, usually use journalistic techniques like a, a good website, a headline uh, to legitimate this information. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and fake news are um, are part of a problem that that's called post truth in Portuguese, pós verdade. Yes. That means, <laughs> that means that facts, uh, research, proven theses are no longer important to, to build a public opinion, yes? But actually individual beliefs. So, for example, it doesn't matter if all the facts and research show that vaccines are effective against coronavirus, yes? If my beliefs deny all that, I don't check the information I think is correct. And I start telling people, my friends, my family, uh, that that what I believe is the actual truth, yes? And a lot of people will receive that, that is fake news, uh, without even thinking about it, yes? And with internet, uh, it gets easier every day. People have to understand how dangerous this is. Some kind of wrong information can actually harm people. Yes, if you say that uh, a medicine is, is good for coronavirus and someone uh, takes it, uh, it's really dangerous, right? The first thing to do is to be suspicious of the information you receive, especially from social, social media and mm -hmm. WhatsApp. Yes. Run away from WhatsApp news, guys. Let's go for the yummy part of the interview, yeah! gastronomy. In the end of the video, Bia will have a surprise for us. She, she has cooked a delicious risotto, that's it? Exactly. So don't, mushroom. don't miss it. Mush, wow, a mushroom risotto. So you can see in the end of the video the recipe and the video, you will love it. For people who might not know, the term gast... Now history, guys, take notes. The term <laughs> gastronomy <laughs> derives from the Greek. Translated, of course. I cannot speak Greek. Stomach plus rule. And it's this, it's the study of the relationship between food and culture. So, Bia, can a dish really tell the story of a place? And what are some examples you can give us, you can recollect? Yes, absolutely. Feeding is a nutritional act, of course, because without food, we die. But it's also related to social, historical, economic and, and, and environmental matters. So, for example, in many regions of Brazil, we have different dishes with cassava, yes, used in many ways as flour in form of, of tapioca, fermented, I don't know, a lot of ways, yes, because it is, cassava is a vegetable that has uh, adapted well to Brazilian uh, climate and soil conditions. Just here in Brazil, uh, cassava has three different names, mandioca, aipim, and macaxeira. It's easy to grow, to cook, and it's really cheap. But all these elements of culture and food are dynamic and change along the, week, the years, yeah. Another example is condensed milk. That was actually introduced in Brazil in 1890 from Switzerland. And in 1920, it became a hit in Brazilian houses. Uh, mainly because of massive propagandas, yes? Mm -hmm. And that fact changed completely uh, the way people make desserts, changed completely our de our dessert recipes. For mm -hmm. example, brigadeiro, yes? Without condensing milk, the brigadeiro wouldn't exist. So to sum up, food is culture. Wow. We are what we eat. Hashtag food porn, you know? <laughs> people like the Instagrammers, people post a lot and sometimes I do this too. Bia too. <laughs> do this. My Instagram is just uh, exactly. it's a food. It's a new idea. In the past, if my, like, if our grandparents, even our parents, if they see us taking a picture of, I don't know, a slice of pizza, they... What, what the fuck are you what doing? What the hell Why? are you doing? Yes. Yeah. From 2010 on, people love taking pic posting pictures of food. What do you think of that? The most important thing of food is the taste, 
of course. But uh, I think that uh, gastronomy is about an experience, not only the taste. So the looks of uh, the dish, they the music of the restaurant, uh, how how you are received in the restaurant. I have a, a distant memory from uh, old uh, Brazilian steakhouses, and like I used to go with my parents and my brother. <laughs> And like ultimately, you enter, there was a person or like a group of, of musicians playing like old certain age, you know, old, uh, old Brazilian country music. It has a connection with Brazilian culture, yes. Brazilian food, the meat. Food is identity. When you when you travel, for example, to another country, uh, you want to to eat what locals eat. I love to try local beer as well. Yes, yes. Uh, this is gastronomy as well. Yes. Yes, it's not only using food. wine. No, no, wine. Uh, wine, yes, wine. Tea, tasting. coffee. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a an endless and magical world. You have started a gastronomy course, haven't you? Yes. How are you enjoying it so far, and how has it been helping you? I started uh, the course in the beginning of 2020 because I wanted to to uh, learn how to cook, of course, but also improve my palate, um, understand all the process and techniques in the kitchen. And I wanted to do something apart from screens, you know, work with the ingredients, uh, do some manual work, like smell it, taste it, because cooking for me is like a therapy. If I'm feeling anxious or sad, I just go to the kitchen to make like a sandwich, something simple. So I'm trying new stuff here at, at my house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have been working for a huge platform, as we said before, the magazine Prazeres da Mesa. Don't forget to check it out huh? here in the description. Tell us uh, how this experience has been going for you. And finally, is working with food as delicious as it sounds? It's been six years working there. I started as an intern and then I got promoted to, to be a reporter there. And I literally learned something every single day. You have to learn a lot, you have to study a lot, yes. And I've met and interviewed a lot of interesting people. I learned about ingredients, uh, our history. Most of the, of the time it is delicious as it sounds. Yes, because you have to, to taste. Uh, I had the opportunity to visit uh, good restaurants and uh, had great experiences. Cooking shows, cooking show, MasterChef, uh, Kitchen Nightmares. I love all Gordon Ramsay's shows as yes, Hell's Kitchen. How do you see the importance and relevance of these cooking shows nowadays in Brazil and around the world? In some TV shows, I don't agree with the way they are conducted. They are important, yes, of course, to to disseminate uh, the gastronomy, uh, Brazilian Brazilian ingredients. It's really important that people know. To finish our talk, Bia, can you tell us some some of your idols regarding food, like some icons that you that you admire? I think that Elena Rizzo. She's from Mani. She's an amazing cook. She was, I think, the first female chef to to be on. Uh, you know that the topics, the top ten best chefs in the world mm -hmm. in Latin America, and she does an amazing job to our gastronomy. Uh, in Salvador Bahia, uh, I had one of the best experience gastronomy experiences I ever had in a restaurant called Origin. Well, uh, the interview is over. No, my friend. <laughs> no, because we have a game. Oh my ah, God. I love this moment. I know you do as well. We have a game. <laughs> as always, my guest, yeah, she doesn't know what's the game about. What the game is about. No. She doesn't know. The name of the game is Food Around the World. I'm gonna show you a picture, and for each picture you have two possible points. One if you guess the the, the right country and the name okay. and the name of the of the dish. Oh my god! So it's two points per picture, guys. The game is not easy. I admit. No, not at all. 
but it's culture, you will learn a lot, guys. Some of them is a piece of cake, but others not so much. <laughs> uh, it's from England? That's what everybody thinks, but no. Uh, I don't know the name of... Uh... It's a meat? Pie. A meat pie? Yes. yes, one point. Meat pie, but not from England. Not huh? from England. Did you guys know? Everybody thinks that the meat pie is from England originally. Yeah. No. Where? It's from Australia. Oh, interesting, I didn't know that. Neither did I, before I, I had to research. Guys, I study as well for the interviews, not only my guests. <laughs> <laughs> Second picture uh, here. Okay. Oh, Apple Strudel. I didn't expect from, less from Dia. Apple Strudel. It's from Excellent, pr perfect Apple pronunciation. Strudel. Yeah. Apple Strudel. It's from Germany. Neighbor. It's where Austria. Hitler, was, Hitler was born. Yes, Austria. Yes, two points. Excellent. Yeah. I love Austria. that. Yes. Well, the next one is just, just for fun. <laughs> Feijoada. Feijoada. But, but I think the origin of Feijoada is Portugal. Really? Well, my research is wrong because Brazil is <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, I have yeah, to, like, yeah. It's, it's most it's most famous in Brazil. Yes, uh, nowadays it's our main dish. We are a, a country in the size of a continent. Brazil is a huge. It's the fifth fifth biggest country in the world. Come on, we we can fit yes. most of Europe in Brazil. Come on. Absolutely. So we have uh, a lot of cuisines, a lot of ingredients and recipes yes. that are traditional. Yes, not only yeah. feijoada. Of or rice and beans. Next beer. Mm, it's difficult. Huh? Oh my god. Do you guys know? I have no idea. Is it chili? No. This is called koshari. Koshari. And it's from Egypt. Wow. Yeah. The next one. <laughs> oh, macaron. Macaron. From France. Friends, yes. Okay, next one. A uh, kebab. Technically, it's a kebab, but there is another name. But okay, but it, it's a kebab from uh, half point. So half point from from Greece. Correct. Turkey. Yeah. Originally Greece. Yes. The original name is souvlaki. Souvlaki. The next one. It, it's a sequence of difficult ones. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think this is the mm. second most difficult one. This one. It's not chili? No. It's Europe. Around Europe. I have no, no idea. idea. No problem. This is goulash from Hungary. Goulash, yes. Goulash. Oh. Yeah. It looks Correct. tasty. It looks yummy. Oh, so fa falafel? I don't know. Uh, Falafel, yeah, falafel. Uh, a Lebanese dish, yes. Yeah, yeah it's it's Lebanese and uh, it's both Lebanese and from Israel as well. Ah, okay. Yeah. Really, in a in a bread, a flat bread, yeah. and maybe this is hummus. Hummus. Hummus, yeah. delicious. The next one is totally connected to our heritage. I think this is difficult. <laughs> what the hell is that? I'm like a help. fried yeah, olive. Yeah, the name is very literal. Very literal. What you see is the name. Fried olive. Fried olives. Uh, people say deep fried. Deep fried ah, olives. Ah, deep fried. But one point. Just fried, fried olives. From? I gave, you, I, gave, I gave you a tip in the beginning. It's totally connected to our heritage. The immigrants coming from this place. Italy? Yes, Italy. It's an Italian dish. Oh my god. Yeah. You Never were expecting pizza? It. No, my friends. Danish, <laughs> Danish talk show is culture. Oh, uh, lamen? Okay. But in uh, lamen, people say in Brazil, but it's ramen with R. Ramen, ramen. in English. Ramen. Nice. From Japan. Correct. I Japan. love it. Next. I don't know. Potatoes? I don't know that. This is from Mexico. 
quesadilla. Quesadilla. Because yes. people always think of tacos or burritos, but quesadilla is one of the most common foods in America. Americans love it. They love quesadilla. Really good. Too, yes. Really good. Really tasty. Just three to go, huh? Okay. Uh, ceviche from Peru. Yes. Excellent pronunciation. Raw fish. Ceviche. Very good. Raw fish. Raw fish. I love it. It's really fresh. Next. Mmm. Ah, paella from Spain. Excellent pronunciation. Paella, paella, because people say in Brazil paella, but in uh, in Spanish yeah. too. Yeah. But in English, paella from Spain. Spain. Excellent. And the last but not least is just a bonus. It's... Oh, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, fish and fries. No. Fish and. Yeah, well, fish and fries in America. From but... England. From England. From England. From UK. Oh my God. They don't say fries in England. Huh? See? The Instock Show, guys, you are learning a lot of English. Yes. I know that. Yeah, but fries I in America. Don't. And in England, chips. Chips. Ah, oh, yeah. Fish and chips. Yeah. They used to serve it uh, in a sheet of newspaper. Really? Yeah, you, you can see that here, a newspaper. Oh, yes, yeah, true. Look at these guys. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Because uh, it's a street food, right? Beer. Beer, beer, beer. Congratulations on the game. I, I wasn't expecting points? less. I have no idea. <laughs> But <laughs> I will calculate Good. the points okay. later. But it was awesome. A lot of different, uh, different dishes, right? Different plates. I hope you guys uh, got that. I I gave Bia one dish per country. Yes, 14 different countries. All the continents, they were involved. Don't be a square book fiction, Mia Wallace. Don't be a vanilla person. Try different things, you know? Yes. Try different tastes. Be open-minded, yes? Please, you know, food is, is part of us. And why not yes. trying new things? Come on. Yes, I try everything before before I say I don't like it. I try it at least yeah. twice. Well, Bia, the interview is coming to an end. Oh, no. come on. So fast really? already. So fast, come on. So, Bia, I want to thank you. Thank you again for participating, for accepting my invitation. You were one of the one of the, the people I was really anxious. Uh, really looking forward to interviewing. Uh, I'm really glad to be a part of it, and I will be there uh, in any project you decide to do. Uh, you can count on me. You are awesome, and I'm really, really happy to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Oh, come on, thank you so much, people, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the Ins Talk Show. Follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Don't forget to leave your comments here below. Tell us some, some of your favorite food, some of your favorite dishes ever, all right? Leave your like, your thumbs up. Now, in the end of the video, prepare your bellies, prepare your stomach, because we will show Bia's recipe, yes, complete, and the video in time lapse, quickly. You, you watch the video of Bia preparing this delicious mushroom risotto. Thank, thank you, Thank you Bia. very much. Love you so much. Bye, guys, thank you. Woohoo!